Unexpected by Kaze Fiend Part 3 Heartbeats The twins were developing normally. Frisk's initial guess had been correct. They were indeed four months pregnant, just a few short weeks from being able to feel their movements. Frisk didn't show as much as other women carrying twins. The doctor speculated that they were carrying the children closer to their back. A possible reason was that Frisk's abdominal muscles were tighter due to this being their first pregnancy. It wasn't going to cause complications. The children would move to where they needed to be. So much information that Sans couldn't really grasp it all. Suddenly finding himself responsible for two small lives instead of the perceived single life. Three lives if you counted Frisk. He glanced down at them. He only now noticed a glow on their face. Their previous worries had washed away, replaced by a serene tranquility. Their children were healthy and appeared human. Would they be like him at all? How could they not be? It was frustrating for Sands to think about. So much he couldn't really understand about the situation. Frisk seemed happy. One hand on their bump and their other hand's fingers delicately laced through Sands. They discussed future appointments being more frequent than a normal pregnancy. Some specific dietary plans and perhaps consulting a monster. If Frisk was happy... That was all that mattered. Sands glanced around the room. On an old rocking chair in the corner, the small blonde girl slept in the arms of the dog woman. It was past midnight and understandable that a toddler would be dead tired by this time. Still, he felt a little bad he wouldn't be able to say goodbye. Hopefully next time. Many books, pamphlets, and forms were loaded into a cute baby bottle pattern tote bag. The item Frisk was enamored most with was the black and white printout of the ultrasound that the doctor had kindly laminated. It was the first picture of their children. Dr. Pierce had outlined the children with a white pen. To the untrained eye, they could appear simply as indistinguishable blotches. Unfortunately, one of the children was not facing the right direction to be able to determine its gender. For certain, they knew they were having at least one daughter. After thanking Dr. Pierce and Chiana for their time, Frisk and Sands took their leave. Due to how late it was and his newly kick-started overprotective instinct, Sands insisted on giving Frisk a piggyback ride home. Draped in his large coat, Frisk yawned. <sighs> Twins. Their gaze locked on the grayscale photo while resting their head on his shoulder. Sands was slightly lost in thought, the absolute surrealness of the situation hitting him all at once. Frisk gently nudged him, prompting a response. Damn shame we didn't get to see Sweet Pea's womb mate, he replied. He for sure had a daughter. His Sweet Pea a pet name he decided the moment he saw the gray picture. Frisk giggled at the terrible pun, then smiled. You're already calling her Sweet Pea? Sands shrugged, a flush of red across his cheekbones. Just a cute nickname. It's perfect. Frisk reassured him with a few quick kisses on his skull. We do still need to think of their names, but we have time. Frisk fell asleep almost instantly. Sands was more uneasy. The minutes turned into silent hours of just... thinking. Would he even be a good parent? The cruel voice of inadequacy and anxiety in the back of his head sure didn't think so. Cruel mocking he attempted to quiet. How could he do this to Frisk? What if they didn't survive this? If Frisk died, his children would surely resent him forever. If by some unthinkable, but entirely possible in this delicate situation, outcome the children didn't make it, could they both be whole again? Of course, Frisk would be the most excellent mother. Sands knew his calm facade had helped them come to terms with the pregnancy, fear being replaced with anticipation. He had to keep them smiling and happy, 
deal with his concerns and fears by himself. He had a moment to flip through the pamphlet Frisk had set on the bedside table and read that unnecessary stress was bad for an expecting mother. Frisk shifted in their sleep, rolling onto their back, one arm by their face and the other across their stomach. Slow rise and fall of their chest, the odd twitch of their fingers. Sometimes sleepy mumbles escaped their lips. Sands carefully pulled down their nightshirt, which had ridden up exposing their underwear and pulled the comforter over them. Although their room was warm, he had to make sure they didn't catch a chill. How in the world did Sands not notice? He realized now that they were more plush in their midsection, and just two days earlier they had been intimate. He really hadn't noticed that their soul had some of his magic in it? Or noticed the now obvious bump where his children were? Was he that bad of a husband? No. Again quieting those thoughts of self-hatred. Skeletal fingers absentmindedly touching his necklace. Every young monster found out sooner or later from their parents, teachers, or friends where children came from. The thing troubling him most was the why. Well, the why and the how seemed to go hand in hand. Human bodies were so amazing. Frisk was so petite compared to him, and they were growing two entirely new lives inside them, even with Frisk having such little magic of their own. Finally giving in to fatigue, Sans wrapped an arm around his sleeping wife. Pulling Frisk close, being ever so careful to not wake them, resting his skull on their shoulder after giving their cheek a toothy kiss. Sans, do you do this to purposefully anger me? Papyrus angrily motioned to the sock that had been placed on the floor of his living room. I'd say I'm pretty successful at pushing your buttons, Sans chuckled, lazily lounging on his brother's couch. Do you not have your own house to befoul? Or has your frisk wife kicked you out for being so hopelessly disgusting? Papyrus rolled his eyes exaggeratedly. Sans had been here for a few minutes and had already managed to exasperate him. What? I can't visit my favorite brother? Sans feigned despair. That hurts, bro. You wound me. Papyrus sighed, picking up the discarded sock. <sighs> you want something. I know you better than that. Do you wish to bask in my greatness? Do you miss me? Actually, Sans paused to scratch the back of his skull, hunting for the proper words. I have to tell you something pretty important, Pap. Well, get on with it. Papyrus crossed his arms, drumming his fingers impatiently on his humerus. I don't have the luxury of standing around being a fool all day. Frisk is pregnant, Sans sighed then looked up at Papyrus with a crooked smile. The words hung in the air for a moment. Papyrus processed what was said, then spoke. Frisk is what? It was understandable. This was so strange and unheard of. Sans chuckled. It's hard to believe, but... No, like, actually what? Papyrus interrupted a confused and irritated expression on his face. What does that mean? Sands narrowed his eye sockets, not initially believing Papyrus was serious. I don't know how to make it clearer than that, bro. Frisk is, uh, expecting. That doesn't help me at all, Sands. Papyrus was serious. Is this some kind of stupid riddle? Uh... Sans struggled to find the words. Did Papyrus really need a clearer picture? Okay, so, uh, shit, how do I... A bead of sweat trickled down his skull. So, he took a breath. Pregnant is... It means that inside Frisk right now, there are children that are... Mine. Of course, the one thing you would excel at would be procreation. 
Papyrus, finally getting it, threw his arms in the air wildly. You couldn't be a good sentry, no! Spawning another you is what you're good at. I don't believe this. Sans burst out laughing. If we want to get technical, I spawn two more of me. Papyrus put his face in his hand. This is what you decide to overachieve at? Why do you think this would make me happy to hear? More of you two to torment me? Gee, how fantastic! His expression betrayed him, his eyes watching Sans with intense curiosity. When is their incubation complete? Sans grinned. His relationship with his brother wasn't perfect, but it was much better than it used to be. Uh, I think four or five months? Good. Their prolonged development means I have the time to make the necessary plans. Papyrus began pacing back and forth, one hand on his chin. Plans for what? Sans was almost too worried to find out. Their battle training, of course. Papyrus looked entirely too proud of himself. Someone has to. You are much too soft and as their father will teach them non-combat lessons. They are blessed to have an uncle as great as I and will be an unstoppable force. Sans put his head in his hands. While glad that Papyrus was obviously excited, he would definitely have to find a way to curb his brother's enthusiasm once the twins were born. Spring rain pitter-pattered against the windows, rivers forming in the gutters of the street. Frisk sat in the window seat of their living room, resting on soft red pillows and wrapped in a black damask print blanket. A pregnancy book clutched in their hand, absorbing as much information as they could. The whistle of the kettle coming from the kitchen roused them from their comfortable pillow nest. Frisk threw a couple of bags of golden flower tea into the clear glass teapot and poured the boiling water in. The kitchen table was set with teacups, a creamer, and sugar bowl. A soft knock at the door. Frisk shouted from the kitchen that they should come in. The door opened slowly. A large imposing goat monster closed her umbrella before ducking through the door into the porch. My child? She called out. Frisk poked their head out of the kitchen. I'm here, Mom. They noted the absence of Asgore. Oh, was Dad busy? Toriel softly shrugged. Unfortunately, he had some business to attend to with a human delegate, but he sends his love. She neatly hung her raincoat and umbrella on the rack by the door and shook some of the stray raindrops from her snowy fur. Frisk carried the teapot from the kitchen and set it on the table before moving to tightly embrace Toriel. It's been too long. I know, my dear. She gently patted Frisk's head. It's a busy job helping your father with diplomacy. Frisk took Toriel's hand and led her to the table, pulling a seat out for her monster mother, pouring her a cup of tea before returning to the kitchen to grab a plate of cinnamon oatmeal cookies. Oh goodness, what's the occasion? Toriel asked, noticing that the table was beautifully laid out, watching as the cookie plate was set beside her. What has that skeleton done now? Toriel raised an eyebrow. She liked Sans, but was also not above giving him a hard time when she could. Frisk disappeared into the kitchen, Toriel watching curiously as they grabbed something being held by a magnet on the refrigerator. A laminated card? They held it close to their chest. A lovely smile graced their face. Mom? Frisk paused to set the picture in front of Toriel. I'm having twins. Shakily, she picked up the photo, knowing very well what it was. I did not think this was possible. Running her fingers across the picture of her unborn grandchildren. I had sensed his magic when I walked in. I had simply thought he was lazing around as per usual, but this... Setting the photo down, they turned to smile at Frisk, glowing with maternal love. I had not known this was something you planned. 
Well, Frisk absentmindedly scratched the back of their head. It was an accident. Toriel chuckled. My dear, pregnancies with monsters are not ever accidents. I did not think it was necessary to discuss it with you as I was certain this was impossible. Please sit. Frisk did as instructed, taking a seat at the table across from her mother. Frisk dreamer, Toriel began. As you are aware, monsters are beings bound very much to their soul. To even have children at all, one in a personal, intimate relationship must desire something more with their partner. Frisk was silent, only nodding once or twice. You may not have had a direct desire to become pregnant, but it is clear you and Sans both desired something. Toriel took a sip of her now cooled tea. Familial. I can understand the desire to have a family of your own. Your father and I adopted you into ours, and we love you very much, but we are not the family you were born with. Sans and his brother have a strained, albeit mending, relationship and absent parents. Don't worry, I love you, Mom, Frisk reassured. No matter if they were adopted, they loved Asgore and Toriel very much. It doesn't matter to me if you aren't my birth parents. I know you do, dear, Toriel nodded. You two must have shared a desire for something tangible to truly bond you to one another, the only issue I have is the act you performed is exceedingly dangerous between human and monster. I am not here to lecture you, however. You are an adult and an expectant mother, so I must be respectful. So it had to do with our souls? Frisk asked, piecing together the situation. Your soul accepted a piece of his soul and a portion of his magic, Toriel clarified. She took another sip of tea. It is quite interesting. I was unaware a human had enough magic to accept such a thing, let alone that it seemed to translate into your own reproductive process. Frisk set a hand over their bump. This was a lot to process at once. Sans had to know, right? Was that why he was so accepting when they told him? They both desired something more? Frisk and Sans hadn't really spoken about such things, about the possible futures. The two drained the teapot and ate most of the cookies, having interesting mother and daughter discussions. Toriel joking once or twice that she would bring down her wrath if Sans was a lazy father. Toriel was glad when they had settled that Frisk and Sans had chosen a larger home than they had needed at the time. Possibly a mother's intuition? After helping Frisk with the dishes, Toriel departed. The rain had not let up. She opened the umbrella with a sigh. Hey, your majesty. Toriel turned to see Sans coming up the path. Her face hardened slightly. While I do not doubt you will be good to my daughter and your children, know that I will be watching you, Sans. Off she went, saying nothing more. If he had blood, it would certainly have ran cold. His mother-in-law could always incite fear in him. Frisk had returned to their book and their comfortable nest in the window seat, looking up only when they heard the door open and close. Sweetheart? Frisk heard him call out, as well as the sound of his jacket unzipping. He was probably soaked to the bone. I'm in the living room, Sans, they replied setting the book on the end table next to them. How'd it go? Sans asked. Frisk moved their legs so he could sit beside them. You first. Frisk leaned against him, looping an arm through his. Well, Pap seems to be cool, he chuckled nervously. I'll have to keep him from turning them into child soldiers. Frisk giggled. They couldn't say they were surprised in the slightest. Papyrus was eccentric. Their mind turned to what Toriel had told them. Sans? they softly asked, squeezing his arm a little tighter. Why didn't you tell me? How this worked, I mean. 
His pupils vanished. He turned his dark sockets away from them. Uh, I... Stuttering and hunting frantically for words. Your ma told you, huh? More nervous laughter. Frisk nodded. I suppose... His mind was racing. I need to do some soul-searching for the answer to that, sweetheart. Are you scared? Even though he wasn't looking, he could feel their ruby eyes burning into his very being. He couldn't lie to them. Heh, <laughs> very. It was easier to come clean. Me too. Frisk sighed and stood up moving to stand in front of Sans. But it's okay, because it's you. Sans leaned in, his head resting on their chest, skeletal arms wrapping around them, the steady beat of Frisk's heart drumming in his skull. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs>